Hey guys, so welcome to this uh, live broadcast where today we will actually be talking about intermediate costs for working with the PVC microbit. So if you're watching this, I'm making a couple of assumptions. One, you have some ex sort of experience with working with PVC microbit in your school. Or if you're a maker, you have worked with microbit before, you've been using the make code interface, and you know some of the basic stuff, right? Now, the other assumption that I'm making is that some of you might actually be engineers or, you know, you are hobbyists, right? So you picked up my, um, the BBC microbit, you have done Arduino before, perhaps, and right now you're trying to just uh, learn more about uh, the BBC micro bit and you know to get into the the programming stuff all right to deal with because when you work with BBC micro bit there are two ways you can build your program one is through using the uh, JavaScript right? that's a programming language and then the other programming language is what we're going to talk about and that is MicroPython all right so What's the difference between MicroPython and uh, PVC MicroBit? Uh, what is the difference? Uh, for hang on. sorry, I noticed that the LEDs, the display is blinking when I'm using the NTSC. So there was this uh, sort of a flickering, flickering that is happening. Is it still flickering on your side? Uh, well, I hope it's not. It's probably quite annoying for some people. So anyway, um, yeah. So for BBC Microbit, we are going to learn in this course um, how to program with MicroPython. So what is MicroPython, all right? So there's Python, which is the actual programming language itself, right? That um, you can actually build desktop applications, websites, and you can do a lot of things with the Python programming language. And in a lot of universities, um, when it comes to programming, IT, all right, building applications, a lot of students actually start by learning Python Right, because it's a, I would say, a much easier and uh, cleaner coding, all right, the programming codes, the lines of programming codes. So for that, you know, it'll be a lot easier for you to pick up as well and less confusing, all right? So um, we are going to use the MU editor, all right? So like I have shared in the previous session, the introductory session, I provided the steps on how you can download the editor and start using it for your, uh, for the BBC microbit. So the URL to the blog is in the description below. So go ahead and uh, click on it. You know, go and look through if you haven't installed the MU editor. Now this session itself is assuming that you have already installed the editor. All right. So now what are we going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we're going to take a look at a very simple example of the uh, MicroPython code. Okay, so if you are new, all right, this is what you're gonna see. Now, um, ignore the first tab because for some reason, when I installed and reinstalled the application, um, this first tab just happened to be there and somehow I couldn't remove it. So it was probably about the software itself, but it's fine, it is, what you see is fine. So you will just see a blank interface, right? Um, if you do not have a tab open, don't worry, just go to new and select that. But before we start doing anything, 
the very first thing you need to do is to set the mode of building your applications. All right, so in this case, when you click on the mode in the toolbar, you see that there are four options. All right, there is the Adafruit Circuit Python, there's our microbit, all right, there's the PY Game Zero, there's the Python, which is the full Python programming language. So what we're going to select is the BBC microbit. And before we start developing or before we start doing writing any coding, obviously you need to connect up your BBC microbit. All right, unlike the make code interface, there are no simulators here. So um, what I would advise, you know, when you are building your program using MicroPython, I would like to, um, how would I say, I would like to get you to try and visualize what you're trying to create. Right, so as you visualize what you're doing, you know, you will be able to sort of think about how you should actually write your program, how you should write your MicroPython program, all right? So let's start with the most basic example. Right, we always have what we call the Hello World example. Right, so let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing you need to uh, include into your program, right? We're going to type from microbit. Don't worry about what it means right now. I will explain it after we have uh, finished typing the line of code. Okay, so in this very first line of code, what are we doing, All right? So from microbit, so this is the sort of a library can think of it like a package, right? If you have done make code. So this is the micro bit package that includes everything that you need, um, like the functions and, uh, you know, to access the images or the different uh, arrays to access the images, functions, the event handlers, the event blocks, right? If you use make code, we talk about events like recognizing the button press, um, the four block and everything, all of this will be recognized by the micro bit uh, library. We call it a library. Right? So here it says import, and then we have asterisk. This asterisk is basically a wildcard to just say that, you know, hey, micro bit, I want to include all of the libraries that are available within your package. Right? So that is what it means. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use while true. Okay, so while true basically is your forever loop, all right? While true, you want to do something. So let's say you want to scroll your name. I want to scroll my name. I want to scroll hello world. So let's type display, all right? Display is the LED display. Then we will type scroll. You notice that as we type display and then we add a dot, right? We call it a period. So this dot, when you enter it, a list of options uh, become available for you to, to choose, right? You can use clear, get pixel, it's on, off, on, and so on. All right, so it's time now we're gonna select scroll. All right, so you see when you type the function, you'll notice that there are some hints that will appear. All right, so I will explain what they are, you know, in future sessions as we get into creating your own functions. But here, what you need to do is you need to enter the string that you want to display. And so we can set the delay in between the display. Then you need to set loop equals to true. All right, so that's basically it. Now we can save the program file. Okay, let's uh, put it in 
lab series. You can save it anywhere in your local desktop environment. I'm going to save it here so that I can, you know, put it into the blog article after this session is done. Let's save the file, all right? I like to use this mu underscore as the prefix right, because it's much easier for me to read the files and, and recognize the files when I'm looking at my drive because I always have so many files on my drive. Right, so mu underscore Hello world example. Okay, the next thing you need to do is always remember this. When you're working with MicroPython or Python programming, you always need to save the file with a .py, all right? And then click save. So we've created this file. Now, the one thing that you should know about um, the MU editor, which I also really like about it is that once your BBC microbit is already connected to your PC or to your laptop, it automatically recognizes, um, you know, where it's connected and on, on your drive, on your system. And when you click on flash, what it does is that you will automatically send the program file onto your BBC microbit. Unlike in make code where if you remember, we have to select the physical location of the microbit drive, right? But here, you don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing so you can see the actual micro bit display. All right, so you can see it's saying, saying hello world. All right, so let's go back to the MV editor. Let's continue. Okay, I realized that the code might be a little bit small for you. So I'll zoom in. And then we will look at another example. So you have seen us using the images and you know you are familiar with the idea of creating a delay, a pause in between uh, you know displaying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an example called um, beating heart. All right. Let's save this as Eating heart. P1. All right, so let's enter the code. The same thing as what we had done earlier. Remember, we need to include the micro bit library and then selecting wildcard, which is to include everything within the library itself. Now we need our forever loop. Our condition is true. So this condition, all right, you can always um, obviously, you know, forever look while this is the central code. But of course, within your loop itself, you can always create loops with conditions. All right. So if you're already if you're already familiar with loops, that is. But if you're not familiar with loops, um, we will go through loops probably next weekend, uh, along with the beginners uh, course as well. So they'll be also learning about conditionals and loops. So next week, we are going to have a lot of fun with that. If you're not familiar with that, don't worry. We're not going to in-depth into that this week. So uh, next week, you can actually tune in and learn more as well. All right, so let's set the display. Or show you gotta use the image, right? 
and then we will so in the make code editor you notice that um we don't use skip it's basically pause pause for how many number of milliseconds right here we call it sleep in coding in programming wise um usually that's uh, much easier to understand All right so, so we're gonna sleep for one second play dot show image dot art underscore small All right, so this will make your heart sort of it simulates the heart that is beating. All right, so we'll save the program and then we will flash it onto the micro bit uh, box. All right, let me show you what it looks like. So there you have it, something really simple and easy. All right, so let's talk about inputs now. All right, so we are going to create another file. Let's go to new. Let's save it as MU checking both buttons. All right, so we're going to check, you know, when button A is pressed or when button B is pressed and when both buttons are pressed and you know, we want them to display or to do something. All right, so let's create that. So we are going to do the same thing as we have done in the previous two examples. Okay, next thing. We need our forever loop. So now we need to check for the event, right? If button A dot, you notice that when I hit the dot, when I enter the period, I immediately get a few methods that are available, a few functions that are available. Don't worry about some of them, you know, we will explain, I'll explain some of them, you know, in the future sessions. But what you just need to select right now is, is pressed. So this basically is a method that will, this is a function that will check if button A has been pressed. Then we also want to check if button B is pressed. Okay. And then now we want to do a display. Oh, hang on. I didn't share my screen. Shucks. Sorry. Sometimes I always forget because, uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, so let's continue. So basically we have created this File this program called uh, checking both buttons.py. So the steps are simple. Just click on new, create a new file, empty file, click save, and then include use this name as the file name. All right. Um, same thing, include the from microbit. All right. Import all the libraries, everything that you need from the microbit library itself. Um, within your forever loop. All right. You need to check if button A is pressed and if button B is pressed. So we will do a display dot scroll. A plus B. The next thing we want to do is we want to check if only button A is press right don't worry about the coding and what it means you know next week when we go into the logical statements 
we will start to explain uh, more in depth in the different uh, conditional uh, statements, all right? Let's just type everything and then I'll explain what's going on, you know, in a moment. Okay, so what's going on now? All right, so you see that in the if else condition, we're checking. Um, all right, so it's quite simple basically if button a is pressed all right so here we have a colon right this colon is there to tell uh, python that you know this is the end of the condition statement then we want it to execute something over here right. else if is just this right el which stands for else if all right this is one word Right together. Right, if button A is pressed, if uh, button B is pressed, we will do this. All right, so once that is done, save your program file and let's flash it to the micro bit bot. All right. Okay, so let's press button A. All right, button B. Now we're gonna press A and B together. Oops. Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, did I type correctly? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, finally. <laughs> All right, I, I was wondering where it went. All right, so yeah, with that, you know, we have looked at the button interactions, All right? So, so yeah. All right, so basically for today's session, I just want to keep it simple. I just want to give you a quick start into it. Um, with what you have just seen, go ahead and write some uh, code for yourself, for your micro bit, you know, try it out, all right? I want you to experience it, I want you to learn it, all right? And then, you know, after you're done next week, when we come back, we will start to talk about you know, the more advanced uh, inputs, all right? handling of inputs, okay? So, all right. Okay, let's let's do one more exercise. All right, let's do one more exercise. All right, so um, what we're going to do next is we are going to um, set, you know, the brightness of the display. All right, for the LED display, we're going to set the brightness. So let's go over to our MU editor. Let's create new. Save the program as blinking LED. All right, so once that is done, let's start entering the code. Right, so we will include the 
Argo bit library, just like we did in the previous exercises. Our forever loop. Okay, and then we're going to set display the pixel. So if you're not sure what this uh, function is for, what the values are for, you can always do this, right? So x, y is basically the x, y of your display, your micro bit LEDs, right? your column and your rows. And then b is basically the level of brightness. Right? So 5 is basically not very bright in the middle. Right? Then if you remember, we have worked with variables. Right? So you're, you should be familiar with variables now. So we want to get the pixel brightness right, of this particular pixel at 3, 2. And then we will display the level of brightness on the LED display itself. All right, so let's save it and then flash it to the micro bit board. Right, so basically now it's displaying that the brightness level is five. All right, so with that, you know, I think that you can go ahead and try it out. Um, you know, remember what I mentioned about using the period, you know, when you hit the period, you'll see a list of functions that are available. Go through those functions. I mean, you don't have to fully understand how they work because uh, right now you don't have to fully understand. But read, read about the description. See if you can figure out what they are meant to do. All right. And then, of course, you know, write some programs, run it on your PVC micro bit. Try it out for yourself. All right. And then next week, when we come back, we're going to cover a lot more. All right. We'll go more in depth into the micro bit programming language. Um, if else condition inputs, uh, we're gonna mix with. We are gonna do a mixture of all of that, and then we will also be talking about loops as well. All right. So with that, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to, um, you know, watch this video. If you find that this video is good, please like this video, give it, give it a thumbs up. All right. And if you have any ideas of, say, certain things, certain topics that you are interested to. Uh, you know, learn about, you know, with regards to MicroPython or BBC MicroBit, do leave it in the comments. And of course, you know, I'll be doing uh, project idea showcases, you know, in the weeks to follow. So if there are any project ideas that you'd like me to work on and do a tutorial, share a tip about those examples, those project showcases, do let me know in the comments as well. All right. So uh, with that, look out, um, look out for the blog article that I'll be publishing um, this week, all right, that will sort of summarize everything that we have talked about today, all right, and then, you know, you can register as a member, and you can actually leave comments, and you can like the articles as well, all right, so thank you guys for watching, bye.